Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Well, my breeding season's really heating up and a lot of my animals are actually paired up right now, which is why I haven't been showing a lot of my regular animals in my videos lately. So today I thought I would show you some of my future breeders. These are animals that I'm growing up for future breeding stock. So if you want to see some really cool locality boas that I expect to pair up for the 2023 and 2024 breeding seasons, just stay tuned. So I thought I'd start off with this beautiful female Argentine boa. So this is a sub-adult female. She's uh, right now about four and a half or five feet long. I expect she's probably got another two years or so before she reaches breeding age. Uh, she's a 2019 baby, and I was lucky to pick up a really nice pair of Argentine boas back in 2019 to add to my breeding group. And this was back when they were starting to be, get really popular, but they hadn't kind of reached their popularity now. Um, so they were hard to find, but you know, they've gotten really, really hard to find lately. And this female is really beautiful. Her color and pattern. She's kind of at that age where she's really starting to get her adult coloration. Uh, so the babies start off with more defined saddles and typically pink saddles and the pink color fades. And then when they reach a few years old, they start to get this real high contrast between the darker, you know, black and dark brown coloration and the lighter, you know, white and yellow and cream coloration. Um, also, their saddles get less distinctive and they just start having this really cool look. So um, these Argentines, one of the biggest uh, locality boas, you know, getting up to rarely, you know, somewhere around 10 or 11 feet, but more typically around eight feet or so for a large adult. And they're also very strong. Um, Incidentally, I would say they're probably as strong as a true red tail, but when I hold them, it's a completely different experience. You can see she's moving around quite a bit more than the true red tails. My true red tails typically will just grab me and hold on. Um, and this animal, and most Argentines, they just kind of move around more. In fact, when I was setting up my video uh, setting and you know starting the camera, she uh, clamped onto one of my lights and almost knocked it over. So I gotta keep a watch when I take out these Argentine boas is they can be a little mischievous at times. Now I wanna show you a few really nice true red tail future breeders. And I'll start with this beautiful Venezuelan true red tail boa. So this female was born in 2017. She's a real Bravo bloodline bred by my friend, Mike Lucchese. And so this animal just always really stood out for how clean she is. You can see her dorsal surface, her back has like, it's very, very clean looking. Um, when I first saw this animal as a baby, I thought that there might be some kind of morph type thing going on with her, but I've actually seen a few other Venezuelan true red tails from this bloodline that look similar. Um, just super clean pattern you can see. Uh, I like really like these Venezuelan true red tails. They don't get as big as some of the other true red tails. And they've got this beautiful golden brown color um, with lots of pink and um, a little peachy looking overtones to them. You can see the saddles are kind of a nice bow tie shaped symmetrical saddle. And they also don't get that large, you know, the adults get to maybe five or six feet. So I imagine this female, I don't know about next year, but she probably will be ready to pair up in uh, 2024, I would think. She's actually been a, a little smaller than my other Venezuelans of the same age, but just, you know, gonna take her time and, you know, however many years she needs to reach adult size. I do have some Venezuelans paired up this year. You know, my fingers are definitely crossed for that pairing since I haven't produced Venezuelans before. So it'd be really cool to, you know, produce some of these beautiful Venezuelan true red tails. So stay tuned for the results of that pairing, hopefully sometime this summer. Another future true red tail breeder, this is a Suriname female that was born here back in 2016. So this is a female from my Prometheus bloodline. And I just loved uh, this animal. She really stood out as, you know, one of the best in the litter, just for her very clean pattern and her nice peak saddles that are connected. Um, her pattern when she was, you know, a baby, almost looked like it had been drawn on. It was so perfect. And uh, this female, She's a little bit smaller than some of the other animals in the litter. I always have animals grow at different rates, even given the same amount of food. 
I have some of her siblings from that litter are paired up currently this year. She might be ready next year, we'll just have to see. Um, but you know, one of my favorites, not really in any hurry to pair this one up. But um, just really shows the beautiful colors and pattern of the Prometheus bloodline. You can see most importantly to a true red tail is the long red tail and this one I don't think uh, she would disappoint anyone just looking for a true red tail. And one more true red tail future breeder. This one is a North Brazilian true red tail and she's actually the same age as the Suriname I just showed you. Uh, 2016 baby about uh, five and a half years old. This female is from the Lemke line produced by none other than Vin Russo and just beautiful looking animal. You can see all the speckles and freckling and background markings that I think are really uh, the defining characteristic of the North Brazilian true red tail. You can also see the asymmetrical peat saddles that are kind of jaggy looking, more, a little more jagged looking than what you would see in a Suriname or Guiana. And so I expect this female probably will be ready to breed next year. Actually, I have some North Brazilians paired up right now. Just have to see what happens with them. Um, you know, the result of what happens with them will probably determine whether this female gets paired up or not, but we'll just have to see. But, you know, really cool animal. This female was actually really, um, a little bit aggressive when I first got her and she would hiss constantly and for the first few years she did that and she'd strike out at the cage when I would open it up but lately she's just really calmed down so a lot of these animals these true red tails they might be a little more aggressive as babies but you know a lot of them do calm down with age just like this North Brazilian true red tail female Moving on from the two red tails, I definitely wanted to include this guy in my video on future breeders. Although you can see he's in shed right now. Seems like there's always one animal in shed every time I try to make a video, but you can see how milky he looks. So his colors aren't going to be nearly as bright as it would be after he sheds. But this is a Honduran fire belly boa. This is a male uh, from 2018 born here. And this animal just always stood out as definitely one of my favorite holdbacks. You know, he's just beautiful, um, pat mostly patternless body with, you know, striping and some saddles in the middle and, you know, beautiful um, pinkish, reddish, orange belly, which isn't really coming through right now because he is in shed. Um, but this guy probably will be ready as early as next year. The males can breed younger than females. You know, we'll have to see depending on how things go this year, whether I'll pair him up or not. But I also noticed that his spurs are really prominent. I don't know if it's just because he's shedding, but you can see the two little spurs. In case you were ever wondering about how to sex boas, adult boas are very easy if they've got these two little things that stick out like this guy. It's obviously a male. You can see his tail is also relatively long for his body size and it's kind of thick and then it just tapers very abruptly at the tip. Our female tail will be quite a bit shorter and it'll be kind of a constant tapering. But I just thought, you know, looking at the spurs, you can see this guy's obviously a boy. Um, cool boa, you know, just wish he had been in shed. He had shed before, right, right before this video, but maybe right after he sheds, I'll take some updated pictures and share them with you guys on my community page. Well, wouldn't you know, as it turns out, this next animal that I was planning on for this video is also going into shed. You know, she's not quite as milky looking as the Honduran Firebell we just saw. Um, but so, you know, she is in shed, so her colors are a little bit more subdued. But this is a beautiful craw key boa. This is a female born here in 2017. And this animal I held back just because of her lighter colors overall. And she's got a lot of pinkish lilac, you know, a little bit purplish uh, overtones, especially on her sides, which isn't coming through as well right now. Uh, but this animal, I'll be pretty close to full size. You know, she's going on, I'd say about four feet or so, which is, you know, pretty much adult size for these animals. They get up to maybe five feet. But this is a dwarf form of boa uh, from a small island off the coast of Belize. One more dwarf boa hold back to finish out the video. This is a 2018 Tarahumara Mountain Dwarf Boa born here. And this female 
is uh, nearing adult size. This is the smallest locality boa with adults as uh, small as three and a half feet. So I expect this animal will get a little bit bigger, but not too much. Uh, so this animal was from a litter that uh, the mother of this litter has a lot of pink in her. So a lot of the babies have the beautiful pink colors. Uh, you can see the it's kind of a circle back pattern, you know, down their spine. Uh, they have a lot of saddles, a higher saddle count than most boas. And they also have lots of, um, in addition to the pink, they have a lot of like greenish and even bluish overtones, a lot of nice iridescence as well. So really beautiful, underrated, dark, small dwarf locality boa from Northern Mexico. I hope to have a litter of these this year, actually. I didn't have any last year, unfortunately, but hopefully this year the luck will be more on my side. Uh, but we'll just have to see. But one of my favorites, I just love these little dwarf boas you know, both as far as their looks and as far as their behavior and pet keeping qualities. So that was a look at some of my upcoming breeders for the next couple of years ahead. So, you know, stay tuned to the channel and hopefully we'll move some of these animals into breeding trials in the next few years. I hope you enjoyed the video. Shoot me any questions you may have or comments below. Thanks and enjoy your boas.